So thank you for coming to Rockwalk. This thank was obviously you. your first, right? This is my first time. So what was your experience? Oh, it was, it was very exciting. It was fun to watch the guys do their hand prints and, you know, act crazy. I have some great merchandise ideas for you later. <laughs> do you really? <laughs> Just well, watching the guys do well, their that. hand prints. <laughs> well, tell, tell us about your book. My book, um, the lyric book. It was mm -hmm. a labor of love. It took about a year to do. Um, when I was a child, I used to thumb through Jimmy's handwritings, and he used to write on anything he get his hands on, napkins, um, hotel, stationery, or TWA stationery, Pan Am. And his writing was just so fabulous to me. It was very artistic, and um, I used to think, you know, people need to see this. So when I was 12 years old, um, a gal, um, sadly, who passed away, Monica Denham, and she had a stack of Jimmy's handwriting. And I'd asked her at that time if she would make me copies of everything, because I knew she wouldn't part with the originals. Um, so she did, and I hung on to them. And it was my dream and vision to put this book together of Jimmy's songs in a, in a poetry form, in a lyric form. Because a lot of times when people are reading his lyrics, they're reading them with notes attached. And not everybody can play, but they still appreciate the art in his music. So. Pretty amazing. And I want to thank Guitar Center for carrying my book. Oh. So I had a wonderful time doing the signing here as well. Well, before I leave, I've got to get a signed one. Okay. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> so uh, it's been out for how long now? Uh, since November. Wow. Yes. And going good. It is going well, yes. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Jimmy has been the, the influence of uh, every good, every rock guitar player that I've ever talked to in the in I don't know 20, 22, 23 some odd years mm -hmm. in in doing a rock walk. He was one of the very first rock walk inductees and uh, and uh, proud to have him up there. Thank and you. Uh, so uh, I was trying to think of questions to ask you and and. Um, I, I I think mostly I, I want to ask about. His memorabilia being in the museum and mm -hmm. honoring his life and his legacy, which continues to go on and on and on. And um, uh, those are more statements than they are questions. Well, um, my dad passed away three years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, one of his visions were to pull all the suitcases out of the closet and stop hiding them. <laughs> and he said, whatever I could do to make sure that Jimmy's memorabilia and his um, costumes and shoes and different things that he wore got into museums and were displayed for people to see. So we were able to expand the Hendricks Gallery at EMP to twice the size as it was originally, including um, some artifacts from our grandmother, Nora Hendricks, who was in vaudeville for many years. And so there were beautiful hat pins and pictures of her in vaudeville. And it's really now a journey of Jimmy's life, starting from Grandma's life, going to letters from my dad in the service, telling Grandma that he's going to get Jimmy um, after not being able to see him for the first three years of his life. And um, just there's touching memories throughout the whole journey at mm -hmm. EMP. And also we were able to loan uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame um, some vests. So they're, they're doing, they have a whole vest display inclusive with what they already have and um, a couple more guitars. So um, just trying to, you know, share, share it around, share, share their wealth. And we're looking at other museums right now um, in other parts of the country to loan memorabilia to so that other people can enjoy his artifacts as well. I know we're doing a, uh, a whole month on, on Jimmy this month. And um, we, try, we try and do that a lot because... Uh, because of his influence in rock and rock and roll. I remember doing a, um, a symposium of guitar players and it was everyone from Steve Lukather to Steve Vai to Satriani and, and uh, there were five or six different legendary guitar players and every one of them held, held him up as, as the influence in their lives as far as uh, you know, guitarists are, are concerned. So um, if I have anything to do with it, as far as Guitar Center is concerned, we'll, we'll continue that, uh, that effort, too, because uh, he was an amazing artist. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. uh, we've always felt welcomed by Guitar Center. We're good yeah. friends with Tom and Rath, who oh, yeah. uh, I know works closely with you guys. And um, it's always home at Guitar Center. Whenever we need equipment or you know anything for projects that we're working on, you guys are right there for us, and we really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it is an honor to have Jimmy still be a part here decades later, 30 some years later. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think for him it would have been a real honor to know how many lives that he touched because I think that a lot of times he felt um, very frustrated in his, um, in his genius because people didn't quite understand him then and now people are starting to understand and sit up and take notice and he's being honored for what he's done and what he's accomplished and um, I know my father was very proud and I wish he was here today that was a little sad but um, he, he was actually here for the 20th or the 10th anniversary of Rockwalk yes he was Robert captured his photo in our 10th anniversary of Rockwalk book which was pretty amazing yes yes he was here for that yeah. but it was really nice to um, be able to see Ike Turner as we know Jimmy did play with Ike Turner mm -hmm. and um, maybe it was good that Ike Turner well it was definitely good that Ike fired Jimmy because Jimmy was able to go on and be the experience and be yeah. able to create over 100 songs over 140 songs that he created uh, for us all to enjoy and continue to enjoy and uh, it was nice to see Robert Cray he's um, my father and I got to see him in concert in Seattle and he sat my dad on stage and basically serenaded him through the whole concert so that was it's always good people in the industry that you meet and it's nice to be a part of when they make history and and you as Guitar Center help to honor them that is very very much um, appreciated and not as much um, you know those those type of uh, honors that are given to musicians, mm -hmm. of course, aren't on a day-to-day -day basis. And like um, Ike said, a lot of times musicians aren't here anymore to receive those honors, and it's nice when they are. There's always those what ifs. Right. Mm -hmm. What if Jimmy were alive today? What would he be playing? You know, that is probably the most asked question. And I always have to say that, well, first of all, you can't plug Jimmy out of 1970 and then throw him into the 21st century. So I think that music as we know it today would be, of course, evolved through all the music that he created during that time as well. And I don't think that the music that we listen to today would sound the way it does. And um, being that he was a real musician who played um, not only the guitar but other instruments and Electric Ladyland is uh, an implication of that where he played various instruments including the bass um, I think that music as we know it today would be much different and I don't think that we would have went through the disco era either <laughs> that's my own opinion <laughs> who was he influenced by uh, Muddy Waters who we honor today mm -hmm. and um, Etta James um, Robert Johnson um, he loved blues and I think that in his growing up time, there was a lot of blues because my father was um, a landscape gardener. He was um, working on ships, working, just trying to make ends meet as Jimmy was growing up. And I, and I have to say that I, I got more of the jazz end because when, um, when I was growing up, my dad was listening to Grover Washington and, um, of course, all the Motowns and... Um, Oh, Bill Withers and that. So I, I got one of the upbeat jazz kind of songs where Jimmy, uh, my dad had a whole collection of blues, and that's what Jimmy listened to. And of course, Bob Dylan, he loved Bob Dylan and was able to mm, kind of evolve a different sound out of Bob Dylan, but using the same lyrics and kind of the same music bass. And now, of course, Bob Dylan plays All Along the Watchtower as Jimmy recreated it. So. He was influenced by a lot of people that I think um, they inf were influenced in turn by him. It was just a connection. Such an amazing catalog and, a, and really uh, obviously a finite uh, uh, catalog. And yet it, it continues to uh, continue, can you, continues to evolve and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a tribute to the genius of the music. Well I think the one thing that um, the Hendricks family we hope to expose to people is Jimmy's genius and what he was um, able to create in four years. He was able to create now over four decades of music and just um, through recording every moment that he had in the studio, in his apartment, on the road and we just we have a huge vault of music and at first when we regained the rights in 95 we thought we had 10 years 
um, which would bring us close to the end at this point. But now, um, by being emerged in it and being able to hear all the tapes that he's uh, left behind and all the music and um, seeing the performances on video, we know now that we have another 10 years. And it's things that people haven't seen before. You'll see Jimmy in a whole new light. What The project that we're working on right now, um, I've been spending um, probably a week every month in, L in LA for the last year working on this project that um, is going to show the people who Jimmy really is. And it's not someone playing Jimmy, it's Jimmy being himself. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, when the audience will experience him that way, they'll know who he was and what he was really about far more than what he, just seeing him on stage or hearing his CDs. So I can't really tell you too much about the project, but it will come out um, mm -hmm. in the beginning of 06. And uh, we're very excited about it because, again, it um, for people that are here that never got to see a concert, um, they'll get to see more than that, more than a concert. Who plays Jimmy in the Ultimate movie? Don't know yet. We aren't working on that yet. <laughs> we um, have so much, um, so many projects put out where it's authentically Jimmy that we're not really ready for that yet. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if you can quite capture Jimmy in a two and a half hour um, time period. And that's one of the reasons why along the way we've put out documentaries that capture time periods, the making of Electric Ladyland. Uh, Fillmore East and just captures those time periods so that people can understand um, what was going on in his life and of course a lot of it is hearing from other people but also seeing him um, as an artist in that year or those six months. I was told years ago that uh, in this building that we, we sit right now is where parts of Jimi Hendrix's experience was filmed. Ah. Pretty amazing building. Yes. This building goes back to the 20s. Okay. And um, so parts of hair were filmed here also. So every once in a while there's, there's a feeling in here, you know. Mm -hmm. Had a chance to tell um, Eddie Kramer that same thing. He was doing a talk about, um, about recording. And um, he just got chills, you know, just thinking about that. It's pretty amazing. Well, we're honored to still have Eddie on board as one of our teammates. Mm -hmm. and, um, of course, he's still the engineer for all of Jimmy's posthumous releases, mm -hmm. and um, he's in the studio right now. He wanted to be here today, but um, we did a tribute concert, including Carlos Santana and mm -hmm. various artists, and um, so he's putting that together right now for us. That's awesome. Yes. Awesome. Well, <laughs> Eddie will be part of Rock Walk soon, so... Um, well, that would be nice, and I'll be here for Eddie. He's definitely a part of that. <laughs> so thank you for s spending a few moments and talking with us, and thanks for coming here. And Thanks for the book. Thanks for having me. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs>